Yeah. Oh, I'm just getting started, Beth. <laughs> Please have a seat. <clears throat> I am just so excited to be up here this morning. If it weren't for <clears throat> the grace of God, I would not be here today. If it weren't for all the amazing, our board of directors, the prayer warriors, the pastors, all of you who text me and say you're praying for me, I tell you, so valuable. And I, I'm going to do something different today than usual, and that's okay, right? Because I'm mom, and sometimes when the mom of the house, you just go with the flow, right? <laughs> Jason, I love that you took your, your daughter to that dance last night, to that dinner. It's totally blessed me seeing a picture, raising up your girl to love God, to appreciate, be respected as a woman. Um, I'm just going to, you know, I'm not usually a chatty person. And I might be a little chatty this morning because... I have something that you need to hear. You need to hear my voice this morning. My voice carries the anointing that's going to break some yokes over you. And I believe that I've been walking through something, and it doesn't matter how long you've been walking through it. I, I, you know, I, I know I look 27, um, but uh, I, I have been blinded for 41 years. And the enemy has blinded me for 41 years. And I have been through a transformation that only God can do. And I don't know how it's going to come out because it's so personal and it's so raw. And I've never actually shared anything so personal in all my life. Not maybe the, the going through infertility, but not really. It's not as personal as what I'm going to share today. And, and I believe that once you hear what the Lord has done, you are going to have faith to receive the healing that you've been needing. You're going to have faith to walk and stand in every atmosphere because of who you are, not because of who you're not. You're going to be fully present in your purpose, fully present in your purpose. I have been through a transformation that I believe carries the glory of God. And you're going to say, no more am I going to walk feeling pressed on every, shot, every side, feeling shaken, feeling broken, feeling in need of repair. But what you've been walking through, I've been walking through for 41 years, and I didn't know I was walking through it. And I remember journaling and saying, God, how can I get through this? And that was the problem, is I was saying, God, how can I get through this? But God has a suddenly for you today. And it may have taken you 56 years to walk to this suddenly. And it may have taken you just last weekend you gave your heart to Christ to walk in this suddenly. But today, God has a suddenly for you. Because all throughout the Bible, he did miracles in a suddenly. And what I've been through is I've experienced this one thing that has kept me from walking in the power and the fullness of God. This one thing that has kept me from ministering to you. This one thing that has kept me from raising my daughter beside me instead of in my shadow. This one thing that has kept me from using my voice. And I believe that that one thing is broken and breaking off of this house. John 17, 3 says eternal life means to know and experience you as the one, the only true God, and to know and experience Jesus Christ as the son whom you have sent. This one thing, eternal life, spiritual life, is this one thing. It's to know God, to know God and to have God know you. And not only that, but to experience the fullness. Someone say fullness. The fullness of God operating through us in the earth. You know, eternal life doesn't just happen in heaven. It's right here, right now. That's spiritual life. 
See, we live in an environment where we're not allowed to age. Everything can be filtered and cropped and airbrushed and slenderized. We aren't allowed to look pregnant if we're not. Oh, and you too, ladies. We're not allowed to look pregnant if we're not. You know all the ladies started laughing. <laughs> you see, when, we start on a, when I started on my journey to know God, and to be everything that God has called me to be. Because that's what we want, right? We want to bring him glory. We want to do everything that he places in our heart. Because God says all things are possible through Christ who strengthens us. See, I was on this journey to love God and find out who God created me to be so long ago. And I realized a couple years ago that I had lost myself in this journey. And I want to show you how it, it showed up in, in my life. See, when I want to be in relationship with someone, but my fear of rejection keeps me from showing my authentic self. When I want to be fully present as a mother, my fear of failing her causes me to disengage into perfectionism. Me wanting to be fully present as a woman or a lover, but the unsexy things in life just cause me to disengage. I want to be present in my calling, but fear of missing out causes me to disengage into entertainment. When I want to be confident in myself, but the messaging of I could be better and I could be stronger and I could be faster and I could be braver causes me to disengage into self-abandonment and abandon my authentic self. When I want people to set boundaries, when I want to set boundaries around me, my own freedom is on the line because I unfollow people and my fear of how will they respond and will they think I'm rejecting them and will they get offended? It causes me to pull back and then I'm not even going to share my voice at all. When I want to worship, I began to stop. It, it, this, this one thing caused me to stop playing the keyboard, the, the, my worship, because I had of other people's ignorance and, and comments made. And, and I was even in a message and I heard that, that God gets tired of the same old song and I stopped playing the keyboard. What have you stopped doing in your life because someone has spoken to you or about you? What have you witnessed? What, how have you been hurt? That it's paralyzed you. It's paralyzed your voice. It's caused you to be your in unauthentic self. See, all these are signs of self-abandonment where I reject myself and leave myself. Henry Nowen says, over the years I've come to realize that the greatest trap in our life is not success, popularity, or power, but self-rejection. When we've come to believe in the voices that call us worthless and unlovable, then success, popularity, and power are easily perceived as attractive solutions. The real trap, however, is self-rejection. Self-rejection is the greatest enemy of the spiritual life because it contradicts the sacred voice that calls us the beloved. Self-rejection is the greatest enemy of the spiritual life. Self-acceptance, confidence is walking into the room and the only person you want to be is yourself. I don't have to muster up my confidence because of who's in the room or who's going to see me or what I know I have to bring. I don't have to pump myself up. But be true to yourself. Nothing more, nothing less. That's why Proverbs tells us in 423, guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. I remember a few years ago standing on the side of the stage, the platform. I remember I was going up to speak second service and I had my keys in my hands. Because I didn't deliver the message awesome first service. And I had my keys in my hand. And I thought, God, if I go out there 
they're going to see that I'm falling apart. They're going to see that I'm so negative within myself. Why, when I look in the mirror, do I think negative thoughts? Why can I not accept myself? Why do I give everyone else grace, but not myself? And can I tell you this morning that no one on this earth has the power to make you confident? Only your creator has the power to define and secure you. If what I see, now listen to this, very clearly, if what I see in the mirror is an example of God's passions and creativity, but I hate it, how can I really trust him with my life? You see, the spiritual life is knowing God, being known by God, how can you be fully known by God if you can't open up to a God that created you and you think he made a mistake? I couldn't fully trust him. You're an example of his most significant work. And I didn't feel it. I knew it. I know the Bible. And let's get real. We hear it every week. But there's these layers and layers and layers that we stack up. And I happen to journal this, this transformation that I've been through because all the other transformations, all the other tragedies and things that I went through, I didn't feel like my voice or I had something to say. I didn't feel like God would use my voice, but I know that God is using my voice today. And I journaled. And you know when you, when you write something, something down and you think, oh, my gosh, I hope nobody reads this. Yeah, that's me. I journaled because I said to myself, God, I, I journaled, why when I look in the mirror do I see darkness? Why, when I think about myself, do I think negativity? And layer by layer, I started to write down. And the Lord sent me to the Word. And layer by layer, He started transforming me. Because like I said before, I, I was saying, why do I feel this? And how do I get, have you ever, it, it, even, it can even be a great thing. I, I got this success, I got this vision inside of me, but how am I going to have, have, have this come to pass? What am I going to do, God? What are you going to have me do to bring this great vision to pass? How am I going to get over this habit? How am I going to get over this addiction? And the Lord would say today, it's not you. It's not by your might. It's not by your strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by the renewing of the mind. You see, because the stuff that we live in is only a habit. I had a habit of insecurity. I had a habit of anxiety. I had a habit of fear. Because God's not giving me a spirit of fear. And I walk in that. But I started walking in the anxiousness of it. I started walking in the foyer and, and started thinking to myself, what am I going to say? How's the weather? Because I feel stupid. Because I don't feel like God created me to show his glory and how wrong that is. See, Psalm says that we're like trees planted. So how we feel shows up in our fruit. And if we have the root system in self-rejection, it's going to appear in our fruit, in the things that we walk out, in the habits that we walk out. See, we can get into an obsession with appearance. That's one of the fruits of self-rejection. It's dangerous when appearance has the final word of our value. I'm not saying we can't look nice. But when we walk in and say, I better be the cutest girl in the room, the person everyone's looking at, if they're not looking at me, my value is diminished. Or, hey, I'm going to post yet another selfie and see how many likes that I get. 
I thought, okay, God, I'm going to get into their kitchen, but what's more? Is it like closet? Is it like underwear drawer? I don't know what it is, but I know I'm in your kitchen this morning, and it isn't anything that I haven't walked through, and I know that there is freedom coming and breaking this morning. So I'm going to say it. You're more than a pretty face in the room. You're more than a pretty face in the room. An obsession with appearance often disguises disgust for how we're created. Self-criticism. Oh, my nose, you know. I got a big nose. I criticize myself all the time. Anybody else? I know I'm not like a chicken in a frying pan up here. Huh? Always criticizing yourself. Never, never, I never get it right. I always feel ashamed. I feel like I'm getting beat up all the time by my inner man. Romans 8.1 says, so now the case is closed. There remains no accusing voice of condemnation against those who are joined in life union with Jesus, the anointed one. Stop opening the case. Stop opening the case. Oh, don't take a photo from this side. No, no, this is my best side. No, nope, I, I don't want anybody to see me from this side. This is my best side. Don't let self-criticism be your drive. It will wear you out. It will wear you out. I declare peace and rest with yourself. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says the physical part. Listen to this. It just, this is just woo, transforming. The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through your body. God owns it all, even every flaw. When we talk about our unchangeable features, there, you know, there are parts we can enhance and diminish and all kinds of stuff. But there are parts of us we like, and there are parts of us that we don't like, and we cannot change. Until we get to a place where we accept our unchangeable features, we will always have and live a half-confident life. God wants to bring it all. Someone say all. All out into the open so we're not ashamed of any part of us. What if your voice, how it sounds, the color of your hair, your skin, your eye shape, your body shape, your handwriting are all on purpose for God's plan and purpose for you? What if he wants to use every stinking piece and part of you to reflect his glory on this earth. And if you're ashamed of that, if you can't stand up in that, if you look in the mirror and say, God, you left something out, you made a mistake, I'm here to tell you this morning, you cannot be fully used by God. You cannot fully know God. He fully knows you but you will not fully accept his love. And I have walked in that for 41 years. And it's done. It's done. I believe that the enemy has been pressing and attacking and pushing on God's people. And it's done. It's done. It's up to you and I to stand up and walk in all of our flaws I mean, you might be sitting here this morning going, I'm beautiful, I'm beautiful, it's true. What about your childhood? I remember Joseph in the Bible, you know, he was the favored one. He had a role before he was born. And that role did not serve him well. Because he was born and his father called him the favored one. And what gave him a coat of many colors? And his brothers got jealous and they threw him in the pit and they sold him into slavery and he went into prison and all these different places. Not because he had a flaw, but because he had a role that he took on that was not his authentic self from the very beginning. Yeah. 
Maybe you found yourself in a family where, well, my sibling, she was the bold one. But I'm the shy one because someone had to fill that role, right? But then you leave the house and you realize, oh, that's not my authentic self. But what do we do as kids? We put on this shell. Yeah, I, I had to be the scapegoat. Yeah, I, yeah I, I had to be the one that carried the load for the family. And we put this on and you didn't put it on yourself. You didn't put it on yourself. But God wants to take it off of you. Because, see, we take those on so that we can diminish the anxiety and fit in our family. Maybe your mom didn't know how to handle herself, so she projected that onto you. But that's not who you are. That's not who you are. Jeremiah 9.23 says, if you brag, brag in this and only this, that you understand and you know me. Know God. Don't know about him, don't know what he wants, don't know what we should do, but know God. Because the only way you can know your value is if you know your creator. When I think about, I think about a penny, I think about an old penny and a new penny. It's just as valuable to the one that created it. Romans 8, 29, he knew all about us before we were born. Every detail for his purpose. God designed my features in accordance to his plans for my life. Your body isn't a burden. Your body isn't a burden. It's not something we're carrying around. It's not dying and we're trying to get through life. But we realize that God's purpose shines through your body. See, the world has an, an ideal, universal idea of beauty, right? It's all around us. It's in billboards. It's in social media. It's in catalogs. It's, well, not so much catalogs anymore, but... Beauty is defined everywhere. No wrinkles, long hair, skinny, no fat on them, long legs. goes on and on and on. The right clothes in the right season and yada, yada, yada. But God has no universal external definition of beauty. None, zero, zilch, none. None. The way you look is exactly and divinely orchestrated by the creator to show the world your purpose on the earth. The only definition of beauty that God has, and it's a universal definition, it's internal. It's the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, goodness, self-control. These are the things that we work on. We paint the barn. I got to paint the barn. I understand that. But if the shingles start falling off, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to focus. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hope that I focused on my internal beauty because that's what I had to rely on. We need self-acceptance without disappointment, without fear, without anger, without feel, feeling I'm missing something, someone, without having to be married. So every environment that I go into, I'm not questioning whether I'm enough, whether I'm wanted, or whether I'm needed. That's what we need. And I'm just going to end on this last point because I have so much more. But we'll do next week. Comparison. It's easy to feel everyone around us is accepted. Everyone's got to has it all together. Do you know that comparison is the enemy's way of telling you that God cheated you? Comparison is the enemy's way of telling you that God cheated you. It's easy to make assumptions that they have it all together and 
when they don't like it, when when I don't like myself, or it's easy to I die I idolize idolize excuse me somebody else. I'd feel better if I had longer legs. I'd feel better if I was married. I I feel better if I had more money. I'd feel better if I got a nose job. I'd feel you know whatever kind of job you want to get. The truth is they have no more value of eternal life than you or I. There's no more value of eternal life in any one of us. When we criticize and judge others, we don't have to take responsibility for ourselves. Listen, no one's rocking this. We're in this together. No one is rocking this. We are in this together. 1 Corinthians 7, 17, and don't be wishing you were someplace else or with someone else. Where you are right now is God's place for you. Live and obey and love and believe right here. God, not your marital status, defines your life. Don't think I'm being harder on you than any of the others. Our impact will never determine our value. It's not about seeing ourselves better than others or because of the magnitude of our impact. Our impact will never determine our value. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. He loves you and I. We are just as valuable than anyone else. You were more value. You were just as valuable before you did anything right, before you did anything wrong, before you popped your little bosom out of the, your mother's womb. Your value will never, somebody say never. Your value will never change. So what do we do? I'm done. What do we do? we got to change the narrative. I call heaven and earth as witnesses against you today that I have set before you life and death. Would you stand up with me? That I have set before you life and death, the blessing and the curse. Therefore, you shall choose life in order that you may live. You and your descendant each day have a narrative, a narrative of life or a narrative of death. We need to change the narrative change the narrative. There was a story of a little boy who had, was born with a defect on his face, and his parents told him, this flaw is a mark of ownership from God. And every day they told him, you're, this, this on your face, is, this flaw is a mark of ownership from God. And one day the little boy was walking with his dad, and he said, Daddy, yes, son, I feel really sorry for everybody. You do? Why? Because nobody knows they belong to God. They don't have a mark of ownership. You've been disappointed. You, you've been disappointed because you thought God made a mistake. I'm speaking to someone in here. But Ephesians 3, 19 and 20 says that I want to do more than you can ask or think or dream of. You've been disappointed based on your expectation. Well, God says my expectations are higher than yours, and I want to exceed those. So this morning I want to pray for us all, because I know we all walk every day being pressed on every side, but not crushed feeling rejected, but we're not abandoned. And God has freedom for us this morning. Would you close your eyes and pray with me? Lord, we thank you, God, for your freedom in this place. God, I thank you for your transforming, the transforming power of your word. Even now, Lord, your healing is in this room. Even in worship, your healing was in this room. Lord, we love you. Jesus.
someone in this room that you you were an accident you were a whoops baby and the enemies had your eye on, on that but God says that no no that's not what you've been living in you've been in, living in the fact that you thought I made a mistake with you and God's healing your heart right now in Jesus name to trust to trust to trust to fully trust there's someone in this room you haven't been able to cry. Lord told me this earlier this week. You haven't been able to cry. There's been no tears, and you thought you hadn't been touched by God. Oh, you didn't make a mistake with me, Jesus. God's healing you right now. You have been touched. I don't know whether you'll be able to cry or not, but you have been touched by God. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. That's one more minute. Jesus. you if you've looked in the mirror like I did. If you looked in the mirror and didn't like what you saw, I want you to lift a hand. Men all over the room. I don't care what it is. And I mean, I, I looked in the mirror and I saw this girl who couldn't do stuff, so I used to make myself do stuff, make myself give speeches, make myself run the mile, whatever. It wasn't fast enough, so then I just didn't like myself because of that trying. Maybe you've been trying so hard to be right and be perfect and that condemnation has come on you and you've heard the word before that says there's therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus but it's easier said than done and God wants to release you right now, release you, release you, release you in his mighty name. It's his anointing that breaks every yoke. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop making excuses. There is no excuse for you. Ha, that was supposed to be funny. There's no excuse for you. Jesus. 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 He made you. He made you. I just see him putting your face in his hands saying, I made you. I knew you would mess that up, but I don't care. And the sooner you can let that go, the sooner I can fully use you. Fully, 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 fully. Did you hear that scripture in the beginning? I know I'm done. Fully fullness of God, his power operating through you in the earth. Your kids need you. Your workplace needs you. Your family needs you. The world needs you. If you, if you have to walk and say I'm flawed, you cannot fully show up. You cannot fully be you. So yes, Yes, the Holy Spirit is breaking through in the rock church and the anointing is falling in every service. But if you can't, if you can't, if you can't, if you're stuck in what you think God cares about, then you will feel disconnected and you'll feel not a part and you will not be overcome by the power and the presence and the fullness of God because that's what the enemy wants. That's what the enemy did in the beginning. Do you really think? Yes, we do in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Awesome. 
Wow, what an amazing word you got.